Hello and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. Um, my name is Amanda and I play The Sims. <laughs> but I rarely show my face on here because I just don't have room to put it on the camera. I mean on the screen and have to worry about where it is and what pop-ups were missing and all of that stuff. So I do uh, show my face though when I'm live just because I like having the interaction with people. So none of that matters except it's time for new challenges. If you were here in March and you participated in the challenges that we did, April is definitely going to be different. So we're going to start out with me explaining what's different this time. Let me get out of the way. Okay, these, this thing that I'm showing you is going to be on the Discord and also available on the channel community in the community section of the channel. So there are a lot of challenges here. I don't want you to get overwhelmed. I've kind of tried to keep them in a couple of different places and maybe what you could do if you're somebody that doesn't have a lot of time like maybe you only get to play on the weekends or maybe you only get to play a couple of nights a week or maybe that's all you want to play then don't try to do all of these challenges. Maybe just pick the ones that are appealing to you but they're divided a little bit. We are gonna start first with these sections over here. So all of these that I'm highlighting, they kind of go together as these are the basics that anybody can do with a couple of the extra LP, I mean expansion packs, but anybody can do them. You mostly just need seasons to finish everything that's right here. So the first thing is complete the extraterrestrial research scenario. That one, I just randomly picked, like I literally went to the scenarios, I counted up the number, which I think there were 16 of them, and then I did a random number, I got number three, and that was extraterrestrial research scenario. So maybe if you don't have that one, go look at all of your scenarios, and whatever is number three, the third one, you do that one, if you don't have the extraterrestrial research scenario. However, if you do have it, play that one. My plan, if you did the welcome scenario or if you saw my welcome scenario videos for March, I'm going to use that same world and put all the scenarios in that world. So that save file is where I'm going to put the extraterrestrial research scenario. I feel like I keep having to say extraterrestrial a lot. Anyway, also in the garden that you made for the March challenge, and if you didn't do the March challenge, you can skip this one or you can make a garden. It was literally just make a garden with your favorite spring color flowers in it. And we are going to be planting any of the flowers listed below. Bluebell, crocus, daisy rose, snapdragon, and tulip. Those are the ones that came up on a really quick search of like what are the spring flowers in the Sims for seasons. So any one of those you want to plant, have it grow. That's it. Grow to maturity. That's all we're doing is like planting the things in our garden for the garden that we designed last month. And because April is supposed to be known for its showers, April showers, we have get struck by lightning and take a shower in the rain. So both of those kind of go along with there being rain or thunderstorms. In order to get struck by lightning, you do have to have the thunderstorm thing checked on your game options. So make sure you have that weather pattern turned on if you want to get struck. You will not die just being struck one time, but possibly if you get struck more than one time, you could, your sim could die. So that is it for the like generic, anybody who wants to basic level entry do the challenges, you do those. And you can share on Discord with us the pictures of any of your scenarios you do, your flower garden, your sim getting struck by lightning if you can catch it. I did I caught it one time on our whimsy challenge when our very first founder in the whimsy got struck by lightning, I paused on something completely different and accidentally caught him getting struck by lightning. And then um, you can put a picture of your person taking a shower in the rain. I know it's just gonna be pixelated, but anyway. You can also write down in the comments and let us know what you've done. That's the basic level one. Level two of the challenges. And stick around, because level three is gonna be amazing and I cannot wait to talk about it. Okay, I'm sorry. Level two is everything on the left side. So like all of these things over here. So I put the website down at the bottom of this thing. It is from the 100 day creativity challenge from Illusory Thrall. So anything you do on the left hand side, 
the illusory thrall person who created this would really like for us to use the hashtag 100 day creation or 100 day creativity when you upload anything to the gallery. And then I want us to use the hashtag APS monthly challenge. So if you could try to remember those two, two hashtags when you upload anything, especially the left hand side using her 100 day creativity, that would be amazing. Okay. So I put either create a new save file or add this to an existing save file. So it's totally up to you what they suggest on the channel, since there are 100 of these challenges, they suggest that you start with a blank save file and there are a couple of places to find them so that you don't actually have to go in and delete everything in a save file. Just search for blank, Sims 4 blank save file and they'll pop up and people have already done the work to delete everything in the world and delete all the townies. And then you can populate the world with your 100 day creativity challenge. So I will definitely be making a new save file for this and a blank save file. And this is where I will be putting all of these. So the first one you're going to create, or one of the ones, you can do these in any order, but I just chose two of them. The first one is a zombie or a graveyard, and there's a couple of options of how you can participate. You can just make a sim, you can just make a build, the building, or you can just make a room if you want to that follows along with whatever this theme is. So I... I'm going to do the Sims creation and the build because I'm trying to populate my world. So I want Sims and buildings. So for this one, you're going to make any kind of zombie that you want. Completely up to you, as well as whether you want a single Sim zombie or a zombie horde. That is totally up to you as well. Since this is going on your personal I'm going to play with file, you can use as many CC items as you want. You can use however you want, whatever you want to make it fit this theme. However, since you're going to be uploading it to the gallery, just make sure that it's marked that it's CC and modded. That way, when people are looking for it, they'll know that you use CC items. For the build, a suitably rundown home or church type building with a ruined graveyard on the side. So that's what you're going to be building. And so I was thinking about doing this last night and I asked in somebody else's live stream, I was like, where would we put zombies over in Forgotten Hollow? And Nikki said, no, they should go in Strangerville since Strangerville is just zombies. So that's where I'm starting out. I'm going to put my zombie in Strangerville and build a church type building with a ruined graveyard on the side. And if you're just going to do a room, make a graveyard room for outside any home or venue. So that is what, that's what number one is. Make sure if you do any of it and you upload it, you do their hashtag 100 day creativity, my hashtag APS monthly challenge. Okay. The second one we're going to do, one sim, different ages. This sounds so cool to me. I can't wait to do this. So in the sims creation, you're going to make a sim of any age, then save and copy that sim and change the age. So you're going to make six sims, toddler, child, teen, young adult, adult, and elder, but they're all going to be based on the same sim. So you're going to make a sim, save that sim. You can copy them down at the bottom. When you're selecting a new sim in the create a sim page, you can copy them. So try not to change any facial features or body types, and you should have six sims. Then for your house, you're going to build a house for a family of six sims. Try to give each their own room to match their hair and clothing style. So like whatever clothing style you chose for whatever age you have, make a room for that child or adult. And then for the rooms, it does say make six different rooms, but they don't need to be arranged into a functional house. So we're going to build a house for the build. But if you just want to do the rooms, you can have a toddler room, child room, teen room, and you're going to upload each room to the gallery, same kind of way. So for me, I'm going to make the six Sims and put them in the house. And I think I'm going to name them all mostly the same name with like one thing different about each one because they're going to be living in a world that I'm creating. So I don't want them to all have the same name, although that might actually be really interesting if they all had the same name and I just met them at different ages in their life. That that might be cool. So I don't know how I'm going to do that yet, but that is the other part of phase two or level two of the challenges. And then finally, 
level three, which is a very ambitious thing that I'm going to be trying. It is this one up here, play the APS legacy generation number one. And it says rules are in the discord or on the next card. Yes, these are the APS legacy rules. Yes, they look long. I do not want you to get scared of them. There's really only seven rules. I had a couple of people read over them to make sure they made sense to them, make sure that I had covered everything, which I've not covered everything. There would definitely still be questions that you have, but we're going to go over these pretty quickly because it's not as difficult as it sounds or as it looks when you look at this, but you can always come back and reference this for whatever you want. Okay, so I'm going to take my face off of here and we're going to zoom in or maybe I can zoom in and still be on here. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So now we can see a little bit better what the challenges are. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the gallery. You're going to download Forest Daily. Now, if you look under the hashtag APS Monthly Challenge and he will be there. He will not be wearing any clothes. He will be bald and you will choose him. Now, there probably will be a person who is bald whose name is Rocky Ball, and that is because when I initially created him and randomized everything, that was the name that they randomly gave me, and I thought it was hilarious, so I left it up there. So I'm going to try to go change Rocky's name to Forrest and upload him. However, if you see Rocky Ball, you can certainly get that person, that sim, and change his name to Forrest Daily. We are all going to be starting with the exact same body, face, skin color, everything of the same sim with the same name. And then from there, everybody's sim life and their sim is going to be completely different. So I cannot wait to see what happens as we move on from this founder that we're all going to share together. So you're going to go get Forrest Daily from the gallery, and then you can make him your own. You are going to, it says don't change his features or anything about his body. However, add clothing, whatever he likes, add hair, you can add body hair, you can add hair on his head, whatever color you want his hair to be. I tried to pick no color. That's why he does not have eyebrows. So please don't forget to give him eyebrows and um, because I didn't want it to automatically assign him a hair color and then you guys not not know which one. He is going to go by he him pronouns however from this point forward you guys can decide everything about your game. So you can use CC because he's going to be in your game. So CC is totally fine. Keep the aspirations and the traits that I have given him but pick any likes and dislikes as much as you want however you want. Also, speaking of that, if pop-ups come up in the game for things that he likes or new traits he might want to acquire, those are completely up to you as to whether or not you want to give him those traits or those likes or dislikes. Completely up to you. Don't forget, once you've finished creating Forest to be the Forest that you're ready to play with, share him on the gallery under hashtag APS monthly challenge. Then, we're going to do a hashtag APS legacy. Hopefully the APS legacy hashtag will just be this legacy starting from now and going forward. So APS, hashtag APS legacy. And APS just stands for Amanda Play Sims. So if you're wondering why everything says APS in front of it, that was the easiest way for us to make it our own without having to add a lot of words. So APS legacy is going to be the hashtag we're gonna use for all the legacy stuff. Also, I want you to make up a backstory about the tattoo. How did he get it? Why did he get it? What does it mean to him? Why is it there? It could just be like, it was a spur of the moment thing that he felt like doing, or there could be a really more elaborate backstory about the tattoo. So I would love for you to make up a story and I'll tell you in a minute where you can share it. Then you move in. You can begin with the 20K that you start off with and put him in any house on any lot in any world as long as you can afford it. Please don't use any money cheats for this, okay? So move him in wherever you want, whatever you want to do. Now, after you've moved him in the house, you can decide, keep whatever money he has left over and furnish the house and do the rest of the stuff, 
or cheat your money down to zero and make it a little bit harder on yourself. That is totally up to you. I'm not telling you which way you should do it. Number two, get a job in the business field. This will work for anybody who has any expansion packs because business is a base game job. We're not always going to do that, but I wanted something at the beginning that everybody who wanted to play could play. So going forward, if there is a job required for a an expansion pack that you do not have, you are free to choose a different job. But for this one, everybody's getting the business job. However, you can choose what branch Forrest takes when it gets to that point where he gets to pick a branch. That's totally up to you. You are free to let us know about promotions that you get because we want to cheer for you and Forrest. Number three, this one is very weirdly specific to our house, but I wanted it to be listed as number three so that you could start off doing this as soon as you move in. Every time you get a notification for a festival, somebody in your house has to go for one hour. So if you get a notification that says like the, the love festival, for some, the romance festival, I was like, I can't remember what it's called. The romance festival is in town. You can wait until midnight and go because it like ends at one in the morning or something. You just have to be there for one hour and it does not always have to be forced. I mean, right now it has to be forced because he's the only one in your family. But for the rest of the time, you play Forrest's house. Somebody, one person at least from that house has to go to the, to the festival for at least one sim hour. Okay. Also, if you're there and you have the money, buy the t-shirt swag just so you have the t-shirts. And we would love to see pictures of them. Number four, after living in his house for one week, Forrest is going to adopt a daughter. Now, the daughter can be a baby, an infant, or a toddler. That is totally up to you. I suggest randomly picking which age. That's what I will be doing. When you adopt, that means you have to at least have a thousand simoleons, by the way. So if you set your simoleons at zero, you have one week to get a thousand to be able to adopt. Maybe it's 2,000. I can't remember now that I'm saying that, but you got to have the money. So one week, adopt a, a baby girl, baby, infant, or toddler. This is probably the last time I'm going to tell you the gender of the baby that you have to adopt. After that, it's going to be up to you. But like I said, I suggest randomly picking the age of the child that comes into your home. She could be the next heir, so change her name to start with an A. If you feel very strongly about keeping the name that came with her, then give her a middle name that starts with an A. Give her a second name that starts with an A. And then let us know what name you picked for your baby's life. And then I made a little note that says, yes, Amanda is a name that starts with an A. (laughs) Okay, number five, after the baby is adopted, Forrest will then search for a townie partner. So this partner needs to be able to get pregnant. Now you can go in on any sim into full edit mode and cast and make them able to get pregnant. So this partner doesn't matter who you pick as long as they're a townie and they can get pregnant. That's it. And let's say you start out in, you started out playing in Henford on Bagley. Your townie does not have to be from Henford, although it might make it a little bit cooler if you say whatever neighborhood you start in, you have to find a townie from that neighborhood. But Again, I'm not going to say that. Just a Sims townie that was not created by you or downloaded from the gallery by you that is part of the Sims game when you load in a save file. That needs to be your partner. The partner will move in, but they don't have to get married. Again, that's up to you. His partner, Forrest's partner, will get pregnant as quickly as you can. But once the baby is born, the baby also gets an A name, no matter what gender, The partner decides maybe being a parent isn't what they wanted and they move out. They can still be as involved in the baby's life as you and Forrest want them to be, but they no longer live in your house. So move them out, move them to another place, just move them out. Two Sims days later after your baby is born, Forrest should meet someone who will be his best friend if he does not already have a best friend, okay? Because, I mean, by now you've played with Forrest for almost two weeks of of the, the Sims weeks or whatever. So this person could already be somebody that he knows and you want this person to be his best friend. 
totally fine. The sim does not have to be a townie. If you want to create a best friend, you're welcome to do that as well. This person has decided to never get married. So they move in to Forrest's house with them. Now here's what we know about this person that's moved in. They get the job of Jim Hunter. No, it's not an actual job. But the roommate works for a gemologist, and the gemologist buys any metals or crystals that the roommate finds. So that's the only way that the roommate can make money. You will search for gems, I mean crystals and metals, and sell them from your inventory. And that is how the gemologist gets the gems. So as far as money goes while we're talking about it, the roommate can only make money from selling those things, and Forrest can only make money from his business career. So don't go wandering around looking for fish that you can sell and frogs that you can sell and none of that. None of that. Just what he makes from work and just what the roommate makes from his gemologist that pays him for metals and crystals. Okay, the last one. When the youngest baby, so the one that your partner had before they left, it becomes a child, you decide who, which one of those children is going to be the heir, the adopted child or the biological child. You can randomly decide. You can pick the one you like better. You can let Discord or YouTube decide. You can tell us their names and a little bit about them and let us vote. However you want to do it. This generation, we will work on collecting My Sims trophies. So find a way to display them in your house. That is our generational goal is we're going to be working on the My Sims trophies. Now, the good news about that is your roommate should be finding a lot of those little boxes in the game that we all know when you open them, they have My Sims trophies in there. So you shouldn't have a problem with this. If you have extras, you can give them away you cannot sell them. Or if you sell them, you've got to cheat away that money. You cannot make money from selling the My Sims trophies. Just like anything else, you can't make money from them unless they are metals or crystals. Those are the only two things that you can sell and make money from. So feel free to give them out to every random person that you see walking by on the street or however you want to do it, but you cannot sell them. Find a way to display the My Sims trophies in your house and show us a picture when you've completed the collection or when the month is ending. So we have a couple of little notes at the bottom. Notes on the kids first. Number one, the adopted child should get a randomized trait when they first become a child. So it doesn't matter about infant or toddler traits. Those are completely up to you. You can randomize it or you can choose which one you want them to have for both children. Then as a child, the adopted child will get a randomized trait and the biological child will get one of the traits from their other parent, not Forrest. So make sure when the partner comes into the house before they move out that you at least pick one of their traits that you want their child to have. Otherwise, you're going to have to try to go back and find them and remember what their traits are. So as a child, your adopted child is going to get a randomized trait. Your biological child is going to get a trait from their other parent. As a teen, they will both get traits from Forrest. So pick one of Forrest's traits. You can either do it randomly or you can decide, but pick one of Forrest's traits and give it to them as a teen. Then finally, as a young adult, we're going to have a group trait that all of our heirs, whichever one is the heir, is going to get the group trait. The other child that you decide to not be the heir or isn't chosen as the heir can have whatever trait they want or you want them to have but they're gonna have the group trait. And there is a note at the bottom that says the group trait will be giving at the beginning of May. So if you get to this point where your uh, heir is about to become a young adult, just stop playing and go play something else until May. And in May, we will discuss what's going to be happening after that. Okay, that is all as far as like the kids go, the group traits go. I have put the hashtags down at the bottom for the things that we're gonna do, use them for. And then finally, at the very, very bottom, there is a Google form that I have created 
that you guys can fill out when you have finished for the month. Now that does not mean that you've done everything on this list, but when we get toward the end of March and you know you're not gonna be able to play anymore or you're not gonna have enough time to do it, then I want you to go ahead and go to the Google form, fill out as much of it as you can. I'm literally just asking for the story about the tattoo. Remember, I told you you'd be able to share it. I want the story about your tattoo. I wanna know your children's names and I wanna know if you completed the My Sims trophy and I can't even remember what else I ask on the sheet, but that's about it. And so you don't have to know a lot of stuff when you get in there, but I want the form filled out and then I'll do a video about all of our collected legacy Sims and where we are right now and what's going on. And one of the things that I would like to do in a couple of months, so a couple of generations, I want us to be able to move other people into our world from other discords. So like, let's say that my child that I have in this one grows up and they have a child and I go and look at someone else's that's been playing like Nikki that's been playing this thing and Nikki's child, I'm like, hey, I'm, I want your child to come into my game and become part of my legacy. So I can go to the gallery, get her child add them in as part of the legacy, and there we go. I can also be like, oh, Katie, I want your child as a friend for my child, as my best friend for my child. So I go and get Katie's from the, from the gallery. So I'm hoping that we will all branch out and grab other people's creations, all part of the same legacy from the gallery, Maybe let's not do it after the first generation because technically they're all going to have the same genetic material for the dad. Maybe maybe that's just me being weird. <laughs> so maybe maybe that's me and that's not actually, it doesn't matter. But Forrest is going to be the uh, one of the parents of each one of our children. So maybe we wait a couple of generations before we start swapping for marriage. I would like to go find a best friend though after this first generation. So I will probably go and do that for sure. But I think that's it. I know I have never made a 30 minute discussion video, but I wanted all the information to be here. If you have made it this far, leave me some kind of emoji that just says you've made it this far. If you are interested in doing this and you have questions, please leave your questions below. You can also come over to Discord. If you don't do Discord, it is not hard to learn. It really is an easy system. And so if you want to give it a shot and you've never done it before, please come over there. Before I started this channel, I had never done it before. So I had to learn everything over the last year. So I still don't know how to do all the little fancy things. We have a very easy to follow Discord as far as I am concerned. And I haven't had anybody complaining yet. If you see a problem over there or you see something that needs to be fixed over there, I would love to hear about it as well. I'm tired of talking about this. <laughs> I am so excited and so ready to play. I'm going to go in and make sure I can change his name to Forrest since he's on there with the wrong name. You should be able to look under the hashtag APS Legacy or APS Monthly Challenge and find Forrest Daily to get him loaded into your game. And the rest is up to you. Don't forget to fill out the Google form. I will definitely talk about it in each one of my episodes. My first episode playing this challenge is going to be coming out on April the 2nd. That is a Tuesday. And then every Tuesday in April... I'm going to be playing part of the challenge to try to get it all finished by the end of April. And then, I know I said March earlier. Anyway, you guys know what I meant. At the end of April, make sure your forms get filled out. I cannot wait to see. I had Nikki do a test on the, on the form last night to make sure it all works. And it looks like it does. So, I'm going to post these rules in the community tab over on Discord as well. And you just let me know if you have any questions and what you want to do what you're going to be doing as we follow along. I cannot wait to see what we create together. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.